What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to divide and simplify radicals, all right? So first of all, let's start with this one right here. So the square root of 54 over six. So the square root of 54 is obviously not a perfect square, right? We can't easily take the square root of this. But one thing we can do is, if you think about the number 54, we can break that down into its factors, right? 54 is the same thing as nine times six, okay? So we can do the exact same thing over here. The square root of 54, we can break down into the square root of nine times the square root of six, okay? And then that's gonna go over uh, six in our denominator, right? Now we can simplify some things here because here we have the square root of nine and we know exactly what that's equal to, right? That's equal to three. So then we can simplify this to three times the square root of six on top over six again on the bottom, right? And then uh, here, again, we can reduce something, right? Three over six, we can reduce that down to basically one over two, right? So then on top, we're gonna be left with one times the square root of six, which is just equal to the square root of six. So we can write that on top. And then on the bottom, we just have a two, right? So then your final answer right here would be the square root of six over two, right? That's as simplified as we can get it. Now, one thing I wanna point out here is uh, when we were breaking 54 down, I specifically broke it down into nine and six because if you notice something, nine right here is a perfect square, right? And if you don't remember what perfect squares are, there are these numbers right here, right? Four, nine, 16, 25, right? 36, 49, right? We can keep going. but if you can ever use a perfect square as one of your factors here, you always wanna do that, right? Because here we ended up using the square root of nine, right? Which again is a perfect square, which simplifies our math, right? Because this turned into just three, okay? So then we don't have to deal with any more radical symbols or any of that other stuff, right? So that's why we like perfect squares, right? They, they simplify our math. Okay, now here we have the square root of 27 over the square root of 75, right? So again, neither one of these are perfect squares, so we're gonna have to break this down into some factors, right? So let's start with 27. So 27, we can break down into nine times three, right? And this is also good because this nine right here is a perfect square, okay? So then the square root of 27, we can again break down into the square root of nine times the square root of three, right? And then that's gonna go over the square root of 75, so we can break that down too. And that one we can break down into 25 times three, right? And again, we wanna use these numbers specifically because 25 is a perfect square, okay? So then these are the numbers I'm gonna use, right? So square root of 75, we can break down into the square root of 25 times the square root of three, okay? Now some math and magic happens, right? Because as you can see, we have the square root of three on top and on the bottom, right? So if you ever have the same thing on the top and on the bottom, those cancel out, right? Those kill each other, so those go away. So then all we're left with is the square root of nine over the square root of 25, right? But we can also simplify that further because the square root of nine, that's equal to three, and on the bottom, the square root of 25 is equal to five. Right? So then your simplified answer right here would be three over five. Okay, so here we have the square root of 98 over nine, all right? So as you can see, we basically have a fraction inside of the radical, right? This whole thing is inside of the radical. So one thing we can do here is actually split this up, okay? So we can have it as the square root of 98 over the square root of nine, okay? Both of these things right here are equivalent. Okay, so now that we split it up, now we can kind of solve it the same way we did the last problem, right? So first of all, on the uh, let's start with the top, actually. So on top, we have the square root of 98. So this is not a perfect square, so we have to break that down into some factors, right? So 98, we can break down into 49 times two, okay? And again, I specifically wanna use these numbers because 49 right here is a perfect square, right? So then we can simplify this, the top right here, to the square root of 49 times the square root of two, right? And then that's gonna go over the bottom right here, the square root of nine, which is just equal to three, right? We can simplify that right now. Okay, so then if we simplify this a little bit more, the square root of 49, that's equal to seven, right? And then we're multiplying by the square root of two right there on top, and then that's simply gonna be over 
our denominator right there, three, okay? So this is as simplified as we can get it. So seven root two over three, boom. Okay, so here we have one over the square root of three. All right, so this one's actually kind of different because the bottom here, we can't really break it up into factors, right? This three, I mean, all three is prime, right? So three, all we could do is break it up into three and one, right? So if we broke this up into, you know, those two factors, three and one, so it'd be the square root of three times the square root of one. So the square root of one is just one, right? So that doesn't do anything. So we're really just still stuck with the square root of three, right? So whenever you have a radical in the denominator that has a prime number in it, what we have to do is rationalize the denominator, okay? And this is kind of a topic on its own. So I'll do a whole video on this, but I'll go over it here quickly. So in order to solve this, we have to rationalize the denominator, which is just a fancy way to confuse you of saying we need to multiply the top and the bottom by this denominator, okay? So we're gonna multiply the top by the square root of three and we're going to multiply the bottom by the square root of three, okay? Because when we do that, the radical essentially goes away, okay? Because on the bottom we have the square root of three times the square root of three and that's simply equal to three, okay? And then on top we have one times the square root of three which is equal to the square root of three. So then your final answer right here would be the square root of three over three. Okay, now just to clear up why this works right here, well, let's use some numbers we know. What if we had the square root one over the square root of four? Okay, so if we're multiplying the top and bottom by the square root of four, right? Square root of four over square root of four, right? We're multiplying these together. So what is the square root of four? Well, it's equal to two, right? So really on the bottom here, we have two times two, which is equal to four, okay? So the square root of four times the square root of four is equal to four. Okay, same thing right here. The square root of three times the square root of three is equal to three. Okay, and that's the case with any number, right? So the square root of 69 times the square root of 69 is equal to 69, nice, right? So that's how you rationalize a denominator. Okay, so here we have four over four plus the square root of two. All right, so this one's obviously a little bit different, right? Because we don't have just a radical in the bottom part, right? We have this four plus also, okay? So we have this little expression right here, okay? So in order to rationalize the denominator in this case, we have to do it a little bit differently, okay? So we're gonna multiply by this whole thing on the top and the bottom, but the only thing we have to do is change the sign, okay? So since we have a plus sign here, we need to change it to a minus sign, okay? So then we're going to multiply by four minus the square root of two on the bottom and on the top, okay? Four minus the square root of two. Okay, so then I can start simplifying some things. So on top, I have four times four minus the square root of two in parentheses, right? So we have four times four minus the square root of two in parentheses, and then that's gonna go over the bottom over here, okay? So four plus the square root of two times four minus the square root of two, okay? So what we have to do here in the bottom is just FOIL, okay? So first, outer, inner, last, right? So let's start with first. So four times four, that's equal to 16. Then we're gonna go outer. So four times negative root two is equal to negative four root two, right? So negative four root two, okay? Now we're gonna go inner. So four times positive root two is equal to four root two, right? Positive four, we can fix that. Positive four root two. And then we're gonna go last. So the square root of two times the square root of two is equal to two, right? Let's just be clear. Square root of two times square root of two is equal to two, right? But in this case, we have a positive times a negative. So a positive times a negative is a negative, right? So then we here we're gonna have negative two, right? So then here we're gonna have minus two on the bottom. Okay, so then we can simplify some stuff here. Now here on the top, you might be tempted to distribute, but that's actually something you don't wanna do because you might be able to cancel some stuff out, okay? So you wanna just leave it kind of raw, is the word? That's the word I'm gonna use, okay? Just don't, don't simplify this yet, okay? So we're just gonna leave it like that. So four times four minus the square root of two on top. And now we can simplify the bottom, right? 
So on the bottom, here we have 16, and here we have minus 2. So 16 minus 2, that's equal to 14, right? And then here in the middle, we have negative 4 root 2 plus 4 root 2. So those cancel out, right? Those just go to 0. Okay, so then on the denominator, we're just left with 14, okay? Now, this is why you want to keep it raw. So on top, we have a 4. On the bottom, we have a 14. So we can simplify that, right? So 4 over 14, we can simplify that to... 2 over 7, right? And then we still have this in parentheses. So 4 minus the square root of 2, okay? Now that is as simplified as we can get it. There's still a radical here in the numerator, but that's totally fine. We can always have radicals in the numerator. We just can't have them in the denominator. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful, so definitely check those out, and I'll see you there.